All right, so I think I'm gonna frag this Gani. And maybe the one next to it, that one there. Let's take a look at it. It's a pretty healthy Gani. Yep. We're gonna grab that guy. There we go. That's what it looks like when it's small. It's actually not that big. Uh, it just opens up very well. And then let me grab this one. Let's see. Let's see. This one. Wait until it closes up a little bit. But again, not a super, super large size, but has really great polyp extension. So we're gonna grab both of those. Um, this one was already fragged. Um, this, this is two pieces sitting on a disc, frag disc. I can't even tell them apart anymore, but there are two in there, I promise. Um, I might just separate them, put them on frag plugs and try and sell them. Yeah, let's start with, that's, that's one of my favorites. Let's start with that one. Okay, so I have three pieces of Ganiapora in here and I'm looking to frag them. I'm not entirely sure how many pieces I'm gonna do yet. I am working with fairly small frag, frag plugs, so Maybe this piece gets cut into eight One, two, or six. Yeah, we're going to have to see. All right, so I'm going to get started with the fragging process now. I just wanted to point out a couple things um, for safety concerns. I'll be wearing glasses um, to protect my eyes during the cutting. Obviously some gloves as well. Um, for any sharp pieces and possible toxins. Uh, this is also why I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. Some people will tell you that Goniopora have uh, toxin when uh, fragged. I know a friend of mine was fragging very similar uh, colonies of Goniopora and didn't realize it and ended up with like full blown rash on his arms. Um, so I'm taking the precautions wearing long sleeve and gloves. So let's get started. A couple things to point out. I have my frag plugs uh, soaking in water just to get any air bubbles out. I have a cup of salt water here because there's going to be a lot of dirt, dust, debris um, when I'm fragging. So I'm going to use this for dipping. Um, and then I've built a cute little frag rack so I can put the corals on um, once I glue them and they're drying. I'm using bulk reefs of light glue. And I mean, there's water in the saw with iodine in there as well. Anything else to point out? I'm not sure, let's get started. So this coral here, I picked up from a local fish store. They were two pieces that were in really rough condition that came from the same colony, so parts of it were dying. And I decided to just put them on this frag plug and see what happens. Since they are from the same colony, the tissue did end up fusing back together. And that's what you see here. I'm in the process of splitting the two pieces back. Um, the Skeleton did not fuse back together, but the soft tissue did, so I was able to easily cut through. These two pieces now turned into four, and uh, you just see me here removing it from the frag plug, cleaning up any dead skeleton, and of course, making sure that the bottom is flat instead of this triangle piece that I have here, so that I can fuse it or glue it down to a new frag plug.
I'm using here the Griffin Aquasaw, the XL model, which is a little, little taller. It's 42 inch. You can get bigger pieces in there. Um, it's got a diamond bit bandsaw on it. I got the um, unit itself used from Kijiji at like a fraction of the price. So I was really happy that I picked that up and uh, it came without a actual diamond bit. So I was easily able to find that on Amazon. It's time to glue the new frags on their frag plugs. I'm using here an Instaset. This is absolutely not necessary on low profile corals such as these. Um, they're not gonna fall over. I'm just using it because I do enjoy the speedy drying that the Instaset provides. You'll see me here removing any excessive water from the bottom of the frag before I go to glue it onto the new frag plug. This will allow for better bonding. If there's too much water, um, it will cause issues. So make sure to dry off any excessive water before placing it on the glue. Here's the second coral that I'm fragging. This one has a little bit more cleanup to do because it's on a rock. I'm obviously cutting off any dead tissue and then flattening the bottom as you can see here. Once the bottom is fully flat, I can create these cute little squares. Once I'm done with each little frag, I'm putting it in water while I wait to glue it onto the frag plug. This is the third Ghani and the last one that we'll be doing. Same exact process. I'm cutting this one, I think, in six and they're tiny little triangles right now, but they will grow into beautiful little frags. Once I'm done here, I'm going to grab all the frag plugs that are currently sitting in water, put them on my frag rack, remove any excessive water for better adhesion. I'm gonna take the little frags out of the cup that they've been sitting in while I continued to frag. Obviously getting more of that excessive water off by placing them on the um, paper towel and then I'm gonna start gluing. I've just put uh, a bit of Instaset on all the frag plugs. Again, not necessary for Ganeopora. So once we're done the Ganis, we're gonna proceed with fragging my Green Goblin and Acropora. So um, I went and got this colony that I grew in the last year. This is a um, Anacropora. They grow really fast. This is probably the fastest growing coral I have. And um, we're just gonna frag it up because I have so much of it. I actually have two other small colonies as well. Actually, probably even three other small colonies um, if you count what's in my display. So, um, this is really good when you're doing um, SPS because they are not very um, low profile, so they do tend to fall over. I don't need the accelerator for the Ghanis or anything that's really flat, but why not use it? It just helps keep the bond, but it's definitely necessary for anything that's protruding. So, this is a piece that I broke off um, while I was trying to get it unglued from the frag rack. So. We're just gonna go ahead, put a little dab of glue there. Try and hold that in place. And don't touch it. <laughs> so let, 
let's see, what do I have in here? Um, I mean, this one here is probably getting less light, so maybe I want to consider fragging that one. Or just this area here, it's getting a little dense, so I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, time to frag this guy. This is a Mr. Freeze Lepto. It's an encrusting coral, fairly easy to keep and fast grower. I've gotten it to this size in probably a year. Here are some other corals and how they're doing growing out on the frag plugs, which I hope to be able to frag sometime soon. All right, so we're gonna frag this coral. I think what I'm gonna do is just mostly cut off the edges. 